Okay, we're cleaning up our mess that someone made. I don't know who that was. Okay, so we got this tightened up because I tightened it. This got tightened up before. This is our bleeder screw down here, which I don't <coughs> use very often. Isn't that an eight millimeter? Or? This does want to come off of here because it's been there forever. There it is. It appears to be like something big, like a three eighths. Oh, really? Look at all those wrenches I just got. I thought the bleeders were always made. I bought a selection. Maybe yours are. There appears to be that one right there. It's that metric three eighths. Cool. Okay. So now all you do is we gotta get the air out of the system. Put the little cover on there and. Do you see the air come up? Yeah. Aren't we supposed to put the cover on and do this? Or was it? Is it hitting you in the face right now? Not yet. How hard am I squeezing that? Not a lot. Oh. Is there a reason why I'm not doing it fast? Probably so it doesn't squirt out at us. So the air bubbles come out. See, there's a piston, there's holes. When mm -hmm. the piston goes forward and covers whole, air comes up. When you go back, the hole closes, the air comes back up the line, stops. <coughs> you pull the lever, the piston goes back, lets the air back out. So don't we have to work the so, bleeder at the same time? Am I working the bleeder? It's it's just sitting there. Is the air coming out? It, looks like it is. Some bubbles. Do you want the air in your brake or out of the brake? I want it out, but I was okay. just asking a question. So this is getting rid of the air. Did I answer the question? No. Oh. But I didn't ask it all the way. Is the air coming out? Yes. Okay, did I answer the question yet? You answered my question with a question. <laughs> but I'll take that as a as a so answer. we get one squeeze, pull back and let it sit for a few seconds. You know why we're doing that? Because so that we just put up. a bunch of fluid down the line, now we're letting the air come back up. Mm -hmm. The fluid is Did getting you see all that did you see all that air bubbles come up when I did that? Yes. Now, what is the reason we're trying to bleed brakes? So she can stop. So we can get the air out of it. Okay. So we can stop. So what are we doing? Bleeding it. We're getting the air out of the system. Oh, air coming up. And you notice I'm not pumping it real fast because that just aerates it. Oh. If you aerate your brakes, what happens? You get more air in there. They're full of air. And how do you get it out when you do that? You bleed them. Go home and let it sit overnight, come back and start over. Hmm. Because the air will rise to the top, huh? The air goes up. Imagine that. What goes down? Fluid. The heavy stuff. <coughs> Amazing how that works. This is why they call it gravity bleeding. Hmm. <coughs> is it the same procedure on a rear brake since they're yep. at a level? Mm -hmm. A lot of times I'll take the caliper off the bike though. And put it lower. See, we, if you notice, you got the caliper slightly angled like this. That way, or the mouse cylinder, that way the air comes up. If the cylinder's like this, guess what happens? <coughs> It'll stay trapped in this the air, The air stays right there, I guess. Well, we thought of everything. See, when I leave and I come back, there's more air in the system? Mm -hmm. That's because it has to work its way up. Can you see how many blowing it and it all goes away? Mm -hmm. Then you can see how much comes up. See that nasty, filthy crap coming up in the hole? That's mm -hmm. all the dirt in the lines, huh? Well, that's all the crap we didn't clean out when we cleaned it. Mm. Did an inferior job. I remember you saying a little dirt never hurt anything. There you go. Breaking fluid. <coughs> I think said Harleys don't care about a little dirt. Yeah. They have built-in clearances to compensate for all that crap. So you gotta make sure your line is, doesn't have an uphill like this. See how it goes downhill right there? That's bad. Here we'll collect right there. But that's uh, built into the system now. Well, if we take off the uh, fitting right here, you can compensate for that. Or if you take the bolt off right there, you can compensate for it. So I'd say pull this bolt out down here so we can get that out. That's an hour. <coughs> Yes, it is. Might even be this one. It'll be a 316s. That's not this one. Now, if you lean the bike over, it'll come out also. See, right now the bike's leaning this way? Yes. So, if you lean the bike this way and let the fluid come out. So, don't take it off yet? 
so put the uh, put that put the piece of wood under there. Shove it. There you go. <coughs> as long as we don't lean over too far, make a mess. What happened to our, our bubble? See, it's still going downhill, but not as bad. So should I take this off still? I would still pull it off. We can take it and bend this in a little bit and it'll compensate. Look at all the air that came up that time. Now service techs don't like this method because it takes too long. They like putting all kinds of fancy aerated gizmos and everything and they blow it or suck it through and Oh like a vacuum? And they think that gets all the air out when they do it that way. The only problem is while you're sucking it out, the air is going uphill, so you're chasing the air bubble. So I'm not sure how you get all the air out when you're chasing the bubble. See that bubble right there wanted to come up. It didn't want to go down. What you want to make sure is you don't suck air into it back into the system. See if you use the socket a little quicker. That's a long-winded bolt. Almost got her. Good. There we go. That's good. Not too carry away with it. See so now the air will come up. <coughs> it's going to uphill now. Make sure this is still uphill over here though. <coughs> You do a, little, do a little bit of stuff like this to let the air bubble break free. That helps slightly. I wonder what this is for. That's for a grab handle for your girlfriend. Oh. Boy, that's what you grab onto when the bike shoots out from underneath you from that massive acceleration it gets. <laughs> you grab a hold of it trying to hold on to the bike. Yeah, for stunts. <laughs> the Superman on the freeway. Yeah, that's the one. <clears throat> As you're flying through the air. Yeah. <laughs> Some people call that crashing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Indian Larry would uh, do that. But he never used one of these. And he crashed and fell off and killed himself, too. So there you go. <laughs> that's true. He should have handled. Yeah. So he needed. He shouldn't do stupid, dumbass stunts like that. I mean, you'll crash and kill yourself. And you only got to do it once bad. All the other times, you do it. You could wear a helmet. I'm pretty uh, sure I remember one of those when you did that. Remember, you don't need a helmet if you know how to fall correctly. <clears throat> Tell the insurance people that too. Just fall on the grass, man. Yeah. <laughs> you just gotta find a nice yard with a nice lawn and dump it there. <laughs> <laughs> You're going down. Go down in the grass. Yeah. Avoid trees. Avoid I have learned horses. that the um, <clears throat> the dry lake bed is softer than the guardrail, steel guardrail. Yeah. Yeah. And it costs less to replace the dry lake bed. And they don't care. Self-healing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, give it a little wiggles down there. I don't know why. This will be soft, 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 and all of a sudden they just get hard. And they'll stay that way, because all the air will be out. I mean, every one of those air bubbles is less, is more fluid that went down the line. And we have to fill this whole long <coughs> line, so it's going to take a lot of fluid. Well, if you notice, we've gone through a little bit of fluid. Yeah. You're going to have to refill it soon. No, yeah, it's a big reservoir. Bits. We gotta adjust these to where you want them to. <clears throat> the uh, levers? Yep. I already did. They moved. I've already moved it. It moved when I pushed on it because it wasn't tight. I can hear it spitting way over here. See? Mm -hmm. I don't even have to look at it. I can hear it. 
So much I move my thumb. Doesn't take much. Yeah. <clears throat> Look at that. And when all the air is just about done, it'll start spitting up a little bit. That's a good sign when you start seeing it coming up. Maybe it's building pressure. <clears throat> See if we got any leaks down there yet? None yet. That's a good sign. <coughs> leaks are bad. So is there more pressure on that thing now? It's starting to feel a little resistance. Are the caliper moving at all down there when I pull it? Are the pads against the rotor yet? No. We get as much air as we used to. <clears throat> Make sure that gets a little air out of that. Not getting much air anymore now. So, that's the caliper made. It's a floater. Where's the bleeder screw? We're going to have trapped air from here up, see? Mm -hmm. So that will never bleed out. <clears throat> so you have to put pressure on a brake, but until you get pressure down here, there's no use opening that valve. So once it gets pressure, then you can go ahead and pop the valve off and it'll go through. Mm. <clears throat> now, some people like letting the fluid just drain all the way down and think that, they think that's going to bleed it, but in the real world, the fluid goes right by the air bubble and keeps on going. Still got air on that when you're done. <clears throat> so we're getting almost no more air out of this. Looks like it's about, oh, did it just suck air in? You want to go like that, the fluid goes back down? Yes, that's how it works. It looks like it sucked in a bubble. Every time, every time I get a little bubble, it comes up. Hmm? See, it's starting to squirt up a little bit. Oh, we got a break. Now you feel it now? Yeah, I definitely felt it that time. See how it's not going? See? Mm-hmm. We're just getting a little bit of air out. Yeah, the, the pads are on the rotor. Yep. There's, Should there's... we put more fluid in there? Yeah, at some point. Those last little air is coming out. Okay, only put about halfway up. Okay. Alright, it's good. Okay, so go over there, you can work the bleeder. You got your uh, towels? Use them all up. Alright, got more over here if you need them. Put that tray underneath the uh, <coughs> back over there. Try to catch some of it. Okay, so so the fluid's going to go up. So if you put a rod, if you put a wad in front of the screw, it'll catch a lot of it. Yeah. On top of the screw, that's where it's going to come out. Okay, so let me go ahead and ready. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, I'm ready. Okay, so now we're going to pump it up here. One, two, three. Okay, I'm holding it, so pop it. I want you to loosen instead of tightening it. Just okay. going down, stop, lock it down. Lock it? Yeah, tighten it up. Okay, don't break it, just tighten it. So you have to hold it down here until he's done screwing around. Okay. Are you done down there? Is yes, it tight? It's tight. Okay, let go. Quit screwing with it. So then we come out. Pull some more air out there in a minute. So you got a lot more pedal on it now. Okay, did we get any fluid come out when I did that or just air? Just air. No okay, so it's full of air on the top. Okay, do it again. Now tighten fluid. it down. Tighten it down a little bit. That's it tight? Yes. Okay. So now I can release. Now we're getting fluid coming out. Yeah, that's because the fluid finally got to it. Okay, now I'll watch the lever now, see? See, it's almost full. Oh, wow. 
Okay, now go about half of the fluid and start heating air, let me know. <coughs> Tighten it up. No air. No air, and I went with about half a pedal. Which Just is what fluid I want. on that one. Okay, tighten up for real now. Okay. Okay, it's good and tight. Mm -hmm. Should I put the cap back on? Wipe it all down and put the cap back on it. No more air up here. Okay. Nice and clean down there now? Yes. Okay, now you come up here. <clears throat> And you put a little pressure, just pull the lever slowly, not fast, or squirrel all over you. A little faster now, twice as fast. So you notice how it's got kind of tight right there? Mm -hmm. That's because there's no air in it. See more air coming up? No. See how you see this bubble coming up? Yeah. Fluid transfer. Now if I go real fast, it'll squirt up about six inches. See how we're going about this far, see? That'll stop you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's solid, there's no, no air. It's got a little drag up in here though. So if you squirt a little bit of uh, <coughs> yeah, you want to put you know that, that seal in there is dry on the uh, push rod. Mm -hmm. So if you put a little bit of Vaseline or something on there to lubricate it, it would be a lot, it won't have that squeaking. Like that. You, you, you can hear that squeaking we're getting. That green can you had? Oh yeah. The CRC would probably work alright. But it's just, uh, it's dry in there and it's making a little binding. Plus uh, the pivot here. I think we put grease on the pivot. We did. Yeah, so it's just a little bit. That seal on the plastic piston is what we're hearing. Okay, so this thing's not bleeding up anymore. No more air is coming out and it's solid every time we touch it. So should we put more fluid okay, in Okay, so now we gotta do is we gotta turn the front end a little bit. To where it's almost flat. See, I'm holding my foot. Mm -hmm. Where's the fluid? Over there. Now you're going to have to hold it. I'm holding it. There's your fluid. Okay, I got it. And how far? All the way? No, leave about a quarter inch from the top. Where's your uh, mouse cylinder? Hold on. Your uh, cover. There it is. How much are you going to dissipate fluid? You're going to dissipate a lot of fluid out, so... So like a little more About three quarters up is about all you want to go. So, see the top of that uh, boss right there? Yeah. You go above that. Right there. Keep going. Okay. So we need to turn the bar, pull the bar that way a little bit. Toward you. There we go, stop. See, now we got more fluid. Now we can put this down. If this doesn't have any fluid come out the top, we're good. See, it didn't, it didn't have no fluid come out the top, did it? Mm -hmm. And see how the hole is black? That means it's got fluid underneath where it belongs. So that means it's full enough. When you see a white in there, or you know it's clear, then that means you have the fluid levels below where that dimple that's sticking down is. Was that a Phillips on top? Yeah. So there you go. That's how you bleed them, the old-fashioned way that works. It's not that difficult. No fancy tools. Common sense goes a long ways. I always thought bleeding brakes was Okay, now when you harder. tighten the screw down, when you start to see the rubber just pooch slightly on the corner, or in the middle, it's tight. There we go. And the end result is, does it work without having any air in the system? Put that all down. And we've got to make sure there's no leaks. Okay, here, hold that. Put your finger on the lens, that's good. Okay, you got the bike there, Chris? Yep. Okay, that will go. Okay, where is the Allen? You got an Allen bolt down there somewhere? Yeah, it's right oh. Bike's back down again. Allen bolt's oh. right here. Yeah, well, I can't see it. The right one.
You got the cap on the bleeder, right? Yes, sir. That keeps the dirt and stuff out of the bleeder screw. That's all it does. <clears throat> <clears throat> So you just breaks always drag. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that's why they're slow at high speed. All right, so the brake's way up there. So. Feel it. That's a brake. There's not much air there, is there? I don't think I've ever had a brake on a bike that good in my life. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> All right, so let's get your... Uh, Butt up on the seat. Okay. Get these handlebars figured out. That's perfect. This is exactly how I had it. That one's higher than this one. Right, because this one's too low. But so I didn't. You just put your fingers like this, and your fingers should just be touching. <laughs> Excuse me. Up a little bit. Yes. That's, that's how you do it. You put your finger straight out like that. And the lever should be right under your fingers. And that's where you. That's how you adjust these things. And you loosen up that one, but you should be able to pull it a little bit. There you go. So, like I said, just put your hand out, and feel it. That's perfect. Okay. And that's pretty close. What that one is now. Okay. Go for it. Okay, check the other brake first, make sure it's where you want it. Feel good there? Feels fine. Okay, tighten it down. Okay. Perfect. Did you get the twitch housing too or? Um, that one I did earlier, yeah. Is that the same size wrench? This one's tight, it won't go anymore. Okay, check all the other ones, make sure they're all tight. Check all four of them. Two top, two bottom. It's only one top. Two screws, one top, one bottom. Yep. Where is it on this one? Lights on the floor. <clears throat> Here, ooh, right in my eye. Good shot. Blinded myself. Dangerous. Damn, all I see is white. Quit putting the new batteries in a good light. <laughs> Keep going straight, don't go at an angle. Okay, flip that one over there. Do that one. Oh, we gotta pull the throttle cable off. Pull that one off. Why do we have to do that? What'd you do? I put them back in already. Oh, you already did that. Oh, okay. That's what I was doing earlier. Oh, okay. You didn't run it through the gas tank though, but that's okay. <clears throat> as long as it doesn't get into this, we're fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that brake's good. Definitely a good brake. Okay, now we gotta uh, slide the lift back, jack up the rear brake, the rear end, let's check the rear brake. And then we gotta make sure there's no oil leakage over here yet. Of course we have to lean the bike over to see that. I rolled it around earlier and the rear brake mm -hmm. seemed to work. We'll yeah. check it again. Yeah, it's always best to do them in the air. So just find a spot that doesn't look like it has a wire or... Yeah, just in the back there, wherever's room. Is it okay to put it on this exhaust bracket? Yeah, there's nothing on this side. Put it on the frame rail over here. Forward, about six, ten inches forward. Up here? Yeah, keep going. There's a frame rail up under there. When you see a frame rail, that's where you put jack. But the kickstand thingy is here. It's not on my side. Jack it up a little bit. 
Where's this thing from? Probably in the bottom of my lift. Yeah. Get all the mess he made over here. Okay, ass up. Ass is in the air. Go a little higher so you get your fingers under there. Definitely worse than jamming your fingers between the tire on the ground. It rips the skin off the damn things. Okay. So you go back and forth, bump, 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 bump. Now put steady pressure and let's go bump, bump, bump while he's doing it. Like I was doing the front. Okay, let go. Releasing good. Let yeah. go. Hit again, released. Huh? It's all released? Yeah. Okay, all right, brake's working. So you should have brakes. We should. So we got to see about the oil leakage on the primary, but we'll find out when you start it up, or we start cranking on it, it'll leak out the cover if you're not good. Okay. We won't know until you do that. Push on the back and see if the bike drops down. Okay, good, we can run it like that. And then you can put it up in gear, run it through the gears while it's sitting on the rack, the lift. Well, we still don't even know if it'll start because of the vacuum. We got to hook the wedgie for my seat in there. Okay, where's the, where's the seat loose? Uh, there's no bolt really, or at least I don't know how to mount the seat. I just threw it on there to sit on it. We should have something holding the back down. Probably this. No, this. Where's the other seat? Uh, the other seat is, I think, identical. It's over there. Uh, I'm thinking it's not. Oh, no, it's not. See? See the difference? This seat's brand new. This one here is used. It has the bracket on there that's missing on this one. And that's what that hole's for. So you don't want to run the buddy seat on it? No. You're a solo sight seat guy? Okay, so you got to pull this out. It's a half inch. <clears throat> we got two snake eyes going over there on the battery charger. Yeah, and it's green. There's a green there? I can't see green. Yeah. It's there's green. A, there's green. two reds and one green. Oh, it's fully charged. Okay, let's get this off here. Go ahead and unplug it for me, Chris. Out of the wall or on the extension cord. Unplug it? Yeah, unplug it. That's fine, that's fine. That's fine. Pick up your can, you drop it over. Now there should be a nut place so that doesn't go. Oh, man, there's that a nut, nut. Here that matches the bike. Yeah. Where? Right here. Yeah. Oh, geez. I wonder if that goes with it. <laughs> it matches the hat, too. Look, he's got a red blue hat, too, with white. He's quite a color coordinated. All right, so see, I do the same nut piece that's back here is here. Yep. So it just slides on in there. But it does not line up. Give it a good poop like that. Oh, look at that. It lines up now. So you always have to beat on stuff on a Harley to make it work. That's how they're made to be. They like abuse. They like abuse. That is correct. I'm going to put this way over here out of the way. So everybody can see how bad this bike works. <laughs> As long as the camera stand doesn't fall over. The there we go. <laughs> now the camera stand won't fall over. We get all the abuse around here. There you go. Alright, we'll be back in a minute.